Thank you. Big light here. So, um, thank you for the nice introduction. Thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm walking around here because here I'm, I'm so small, but here's so many lights. So I'm, yes, I, I will walk a bit. Um, uh, I, I actually, I came a long way uh, from far north. Uh, so I hope I'm looking not so tired anymore because I started early in the morning yesterday at four o'clock. I came from Bude, yes. You have heard about Bude, of course you have, yes. Uh, this is uh, the capital of the municipal, no, it's the capital of the county Nordland in northern Norway. You may have heard of Glimt, Bude Glimt, who beat yesterday Besiktas in the conference league. And we, we bet all, beat also uh, Mourinho's Roma, 6-1. to one. And he was really angry about that. That was last year. So uh, this uh, football club, uh, maybe, well, now, now. And uh, then, I, of course, I have to mention that next year we are European capital of culture. Ooh. So you still haven't heard. Uh, but m you may have heard about Lofoten. Yes. Yes. And if you go to Lofoten, you come to Buda, if you take the plane which could be recommended if you want to save a little bit of time and not using days just traveling through Scandinavia. Um, but still, uh, Buda is not, the, not so very north in terms of Norway, because Norway is like this, and we are in the end of the second third. So uh, it's a 67 degree north. That means we are above the polar circle, but uh, due to the Gulf Stream, we have nice conditions. Uh, so this is real winter, this is not summer, so this is in winter. Um, <laughs> it's, it's looking green in summer, so we have all the seasons and it's, it's not that bad. Uh, yes, I'm a little bit surprised being invited here because, I'm, as you already know here, I mean, I'm totally confused as soon as the PC is not working. Like, should I, ha, I can start, push the button and do not push the button and the rest I'm totally blank, so... Uh, I'm, I'm happy that I can manage my Instagram account. This is the biggest digital thing I, I manage. So uh, I'm impressed about you guys uh, dealing with all those stuff. So it's amazing. I, I always be very kind to our people at the university working with the uh, technology and the data technology because I know I'm dependent on those on their knowledge. So, okay, enough about that. Um, I have. I was very impressed about this young lady. Uh, I have never left school, so I never dared to, to go out in the world with real life. So I'm, I'm, I'm a fish and uh, I'm, I'm uh, living in this ivory tower, but I try to get connected to the ground. And I'm teaching students from different countries uh, in, at Nord University where I'm working. Uh, and I have my background is from the sports sciences, uh, biology and uh, northern languages and culture. Uh, as well as psychology and pedagogy. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really fond of reading. Uh, still proper books with pages you can touch because I like touching things. So how, how did I start? Because the topic is a bit special for you guys, I think. Um, I, I was always very happy in swimming. I was born on the 10th of March. Uh, that means I'm, I'm fish uh, and uh, I... I definitely living up to this already in the early beginning. My parents always had a big uh, drama to do when they, we make holidays uh, on, on an island uh, in, in the northern sea, and uh, I, I don't want to go out of the water again, even though I was already blue lips, but smiling, always smiling. Blue lips and smiling was a very classical. So this was my best friend when I was three, four, five years old, this dolphin and I, I was really, I was devastated when this guy gets so many holes that we have to throw it away. And, ah, so I loved it. Uh, yes, and then uh, that was my start of, the, of be, becoming a swimmer. I learned early to swim. I was uh, competing early, but you know, this in the pool is boop, 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 boop. So I always loved rather being outside. Uh, if it's the ocean or a lake or, or also mountain lakes, which uh, also in the Alps are not the warmest places to swim in. So I loved the cold water as well already. And uh, yes, I grew older, uh, studied sports, uh, decided to have swimming as a main subject in my sporting sports studies. And I'm teaching 
uh, swimming, uh, mostly now I'm a bit further on that I have also more about nature, adventure knowledge, extreme environments. And uh, yeah, uh, great, my PhD in Oslo at the Norwegian School for Sports Sciences, working there for a while. And then I moved up to the north and first to Alta, which is just 200 kilometers beyond the North Cape. And then I'm now living a little bit more south in Bude and teaching there and doing research also about swimming and uh, about this field. Uh, one of my personal highlights was when I became the first Norwegian swimmer uh, crossing the Salström, which is the world's uh, strongest tidal current. Uh, and now you're not swimming when it's on the strongest. Uh, you have to make, you have to look when it's in the changing period, uh, and it's a little bit difficult. You have to look when the moon phase is, and so on. And of course, I had a had a boat uh, which where there if something was very dangerous, so I had a had a had a backup there. So, uh, but it was fantastic because I got this feeling: we humans are just small. <laughs> And the landscape and and yes you you guys who can manage all those computers and the computers can be very destructive and they can do lots of things we have artif artificial intelligence <laughs> but as soon as i take out the plug from the socket you are lost <laughs> you're fucking lost <laughs> or a bomb has attacked all houses and you're standing there and you just have your things on your body then, sorry, it's, uh, and also your mobile phone, you can take it with you when you're on escape, and lots of people have done so when they moved out from Ukraine. But if you don't get new energy, your telephone will die. So, uh, we are just tiny little things in the entire universe. And, and when you're swimming outside in the nature and you're swimming in waters who show you they have more power than you, uh, then you really get this feeling that wow, I'm 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 a part of the nature, and this is I can tell you this is a very very healthy feeling for us humans who used to think we can manage all things. Why are we getting so uh, disappointed sometimes? Yeah, because we want to control all things, and we're so used to control everything. And and nowadays, I mean, I'm teaching at the university for a long time. Now it's like students are more and more. Uh, uh, impatient because they used to, to download an app and click on and bang and zap, it's finished. And also now some students started to use this chat G GPT for, for writing their thesis. To click on, give in the topic and zap, poof. but you don't learn anything about that. So, uh, uh, so this impatience uh, we are used to, if to learn, no, no, we are a part, a small part and thing, thing takes time. Um, yes, and uh, I started actually <coughs> to swim very early, but uh, also swimming outside. But the starting with the that I thought, okay, it's cool to to swim in the cold. It was when I was guest lecturer on Iceland, and my Icelandic colleagues they have their Wednesday lunch swimming in the lake close to university, and this was not a lake with a warm source in there, so the warm sauce was not far away anyway, but, but the lake was cold, and the first time I was, have been there was in March. <laughs> Staying there, oh, good. So I went in there, and it was the first time, it was really, wah. But I saw the colleagues are swimming rounds and rounds, and I'm, what are they doing? How can they do that? And then I said to my colleague, Hafi, I want to do this again. I have to try it. I also want to swim like this. And uh, then I swam, and I got so, I feel like, uh, oh, wow, it's so, oh, look at my legs. Oh, it's so fantastic. I got this uh, totally in, in, a, in another fair, and, and uh, he, he just said, oh, Dagmar, you're looking like on your own LSD trip. Uh, and uh, then this fascination starts because you can get, uh, yeah, come into this uh, without doing uh, lots of stuff. And... Uh, yeah, maybe I should go further, uh, talk a bit about this uh, rush you get later. Um, I then started to, to do it in ha at home at, in Budo and uh, started, uh, founded a group, Budo Penguins. And uh, now we're still more increased. We're now nearly 500 members. 
uh, and uh, started this group in the beginning of 2020, in January, and uh, you may remember that something happens in March 2020. Uh, and this was, of course, a really rush. Um, I want to tell uh, here, I mean, I'm jumping, but it's, uh, I mean, I'm a social professor, it's like a little bit professor, but I jumped over those, some other things here. Uh, I will tell you a little bit about this uh, open water swimming, wild swimming, ice swimming. Uh, and there, of course, was a huge rise in interest during the COVID pandemic. Uh, the swimming pools were closed in, in the world, in Norway as well uh, as, as in Germany. And uh, uh, people tried to find out what can, can we do. And uh, there was, of course, a rise in participation. People tried. Um, then we have also uh, in Norway the special situation. We have this cold water swimming in the outdoor education. Uh, if you have seen Norway on the map, it's a really long coast. If you put the uh, entire coast and stretch it out, you will come to nearly to the Antarctic. Uh, and if you just take the directly coastline, you at least come to South Africa. To the, to the so it's really long, long line with lots of waters, and this water, the coast. If you are happy, it could be in the south around 20 degrees, but mostly at least in the north is around 15, 14 in summer, 14, 15 degrees uh, during the winter months, uh, around four degrees. So the water is not that warm. So uh, and therefore uh, in our curriculum for the schools, kids should learn how to deal with the cold water if they're falling out. Because lots of people doing this, we call for free lift sleeve, that's very popular. Norway is a long country with lots of nature and just five million inhabitants. Uh, so we have lots of nature. We are walking around, we are doing stuff, and uh, we want to avoid that people are drowning, uh, even though we have uh, around about 100 drownings, as a death by drowning every year, and most of them are closed, connected to not actually swimming, but most of them are happening when they're on the boats or walking around or Doing, going through ice. So school kids should learn how to deal cold water. And as we, in summer times, we also want to have fun in water. So we also have to learn how to, to be in the cold water in summer just for pleasure and fun. So it's a part of the curriculum. And uh, it's also that in Scandinavia, and especially Norway with a free lift sleeve tradition, we are used to be outside and using nature and having fun there. Um, Yes, this is very theoretical here. Uh, the methods for <laughs> this year is, uh, I'm, I'm base, basing what I'm talking about, about, of course, from my own experience. Uh, I've read a lot of literature uh, from good colleagues from the physiology. Uh, I'm teaching uh, two uh, subjects at university. The one is adventure knowledge, which is in the, in the autumn. And I already can mention that I'm so lucky and proud that I have one of my students from for two years ago here in the auditorium. Paula, please raise up. <laughs> so uh, it was such fun that she accidentally is in Nuremberg. She is, uh, it's both studies, the adventure knowledge and the extreme environments are uh, international studies for Erasmus students and partnership students. So they are coming from lots of different countries from Germany, like Paula, from the Netherlands, Finland, Denmark, Czech Republic, Canada, Japan, uh, yeah, Belgium, Denmark, Sweden. So lots of different countries. Uh, uh, so it's very nice to, to have those uh, young people from Europe there. And I do have done some studies about the fascination about the aesthetics of this wild swimming with a colleague from Sweden and uh, about how people are, why are they doing these activities with a physiology colleague from the Great Brit, from Great Britain, John Kelly. Um, yes. So why swimming and why can we swim? And yes, we have the same water physics when we're going outside. Uh, it's just when the water temperature is colder then the density of the water is even higher. Uh, the fascinating thing with being in water, and that's also happening when you're going into a swimming hall, uh, could be a good start start there um, is this yeah I call it <laughs> adapted after my Kandira, the being likeness of a being uh, water has 800 to 1000 times higher density than air uh, and that helps that we can 
float in the water because of the Archimedes principle, which seems, says that uh, if, we, as, if we are immersed in water, we get the power of the water back of the volume water we have have displaced. So if you if you go in in a, in a bathtub totally full with water and you would sit, sit in, then the volume of your body will run over. And this water you can collect and you can weigh. And this weight has a weight force. And this weight force is actually the force you get also pushing up where you can float. Therefore, it's so important that you emerge as much as possible for getting as much as, as flotation. The simple thing. So if you have uh, new beginners in swimming and they're swimming like this and they're feeling that they're thinking, that's true because they have too much of their body outside of the body volume outside of the water. So therefore, learning kids or new beginners to have entire body down is, is the best thing. So if your kid is diving, you have won already the game in terms of learning to swim. So now I have to stop because otherwise I'm teaching the beginner swimming here. So, um, but, but okay, uh, so swimming is fascinating and, and just swimming in, in, a, in a warm uh, milieu is nice. You have, I, most of you will have experience about that uh, because the touch of the water on our skin, it's like getting a hug from a good friend. So the water will embrace you and give you this contact of your skin and this has also an reaction and it's uh, also it give a, gives us feeling that you get uh, oxytocin, which is our wellness hormone. So you get this oxytocin uh, released in your body when you go into water. Uh, but, but why now outside and why in cold water? I mean, the warm water down in the south, we can maybe imagine, but why, why cold water? So we will talk about this a bit. And... Um, Yes, first I want to have some definitions. I'm a little like, like uh, this is my, my academic background, I'm sorry. Uh, so there, we are talking about ice bathing, then we are just uh, sinking down, and you have seen this during COVID that people are sitting in this uh, rubber box, you know what it's called, in these boxes, trash boxes, and f sink down or in their, their fridges and, and just immerse them in cold water. This is what we call for ice bathing. Uh, then we have the ice swimming, and that means that you're really uh, swimming through the water, you move through the water. Uh, and then the winter swimming and open water swimming. So, hmm. Um, ice swimming and winter swimming. We have two official associations, uh, the International Ice Swimming Association and the World, uh, winter, swimming World winter Swimming Association. Uh, the winter swimmers, they define uh, ice swimming as all b b beyond uh, below 10 degrees. Uh, water temperature, the ice swimming association said no, and the ice mile, the official ice mile rec recognition is below five degrees. So the ice swimmers are a little bit more heavy. Uh, and then we have open water swimming, with is, which is uh, at the moment the official uh, swimming in open waters, uh, the, the, the form uh, done by the World Aquatics, former FINA, the International Swimming Federation which is now called World Aquatic because we're, they embrace more than just swimming. And this is open water swimming, as you can find at, Olymp as, at the Olympics or, or so. Uh, yes, and there they have rules and competitions and okay, I have to stop because ice swimming has also no competitions. Uh, but the open water swimming is at least organized in the World Aquatics and we know this from the Olympics. Uh, this was in one I called for the paradise. I was on a, on a bathing holidays for two years, uh, right before Christmas in Helsinki. <laughs> I was on other go to the, to the Mediterranean area and I'm going for bathing holidays in Helsinki. It's a wonderful place. Uh, they have lots of sauna. So for you guys who, are, who want to have it warm afterwards, Helsinki, wow, or Finland. Uh, this was outside one of the saunas, uh, Lowly, which means uh, actually damp. Uh, it was slush. You, you could swim in a way, but it was the waves were coming, and you get this massage. Uh, this just happens there in Finland in the Bottenvika because there they are in Botnisk uh, in the, the Baltic Sea because the salt uh, content is not that high, so it's, it's freezing a little bit. You wouldn't have this in Budo. We are we are close to the Gulf Stream, so in Budo we have uh, the entire winter around four degrees in the water except the first two 
weeks of February where you used to have 2.3, 2.4 degrees. So due to the Gulf Stream, we, we have nice conditions. Without the Gulf Stream, uh, the place where I'm living would look like the Antarctica. So, uh, and, and not, not just my place, I suppose also here uh, more south. Um, yeah, there are some competitions also for this ice swimming. And it's a, it's a funny fellowship. We are doing this ice swimming. Um, this was at Wandsbrew. And Wandsbrew is the biggest, largest uh, open water swimming competition for, for all people in, in the world in summer. And they started now to also to have this uh, have have a competition in winter, uh, very nice. They they cut out a pool in the in the river, and they have to wreck it. That's not freezing again because there, this water was n n uh, minus uh, zero point one degree. It was uh, very fascinating. So, but most people are not. Uh, not in for this comp competitive part. But you know, some you have this. Uh, I don't know if it's no wrong to tell you the cliches. You have this competitive, you're, you're part of the testosterone, so you want to test yourself. So, um, but most people are doing it for themselves. Uh, and I mentioned COVID, but actually this cold water swimming isn't new. Uh, already in, 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 in uh, the antique, Hippocrates has mentioned cold water as a good thing to be in. That was 400 years before Christ or before our time uh, and also Weinman, uh, the guy who wrote the first teach book about how to swim uh, wrote in 1538 uh, uh, mentioned this cold water swimming and of course I mean we have the Romans they have some of those warmer uh, pools and so on but otherwise I mean people had to swim outside I and mean, we haven't had swimming pools or swimming holes uh, so it actually was was not um, something which was invented now. So people have done this before. The old Vikings <coughs> were also, of course, have to swim outside. <coughs> and uh, there were old uh, Viking competition <coughs> um, where the competitive part was that uh, the guy who was able to swim longest won. The other guy who hadn't returned, he, he lost <laughs> in, in different ways. <laughs> Okay, but <clears throat> I'm talking so exhausting, but of course, why are people a little bit like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, most of the research about this was, of course, that there are risks connected to, to this cold water swimming. And the first uh, researches were mostly done when people, not, not deliberately, they're, they're by accident falling into cold water because a boat was sinking or something happened. So people are not going into the water because I want to go, but they fall because of an accident. They were the first uh, researchers. And of course, when you're going we, deliberately, we want to go into the water. Of course, we, we are facing some of the same risks. <clears throat> and one of the most uh, important is, of course, the hypothermia. Uh, our body works best if we have a core temperature around 37 degrees. If this core temperature is below 35, coming to 34, we, we, we are getting in trouble because uh, our enzymes are not working at best anymore. Uh, so the hypothermia that we are not going too cold in our core is very important. Uh, then there is, of course, the aspect of drowning because of the reaction of our body to the cold water. When we accidentally fall into cold water, we get this cold water shock. Uh, and where we have never learned how to deal with it, we, we, we get a problem. Um, the cold water shock, the first which will then happen then is <laughs> that you, you, you hyperventilate. Uh, and at the same time, if you're, you're falling with your face down, you get this uh, diving reflex which calms down and which sends totally different signals to your heart. Uh, and if you haven't dealt with it and you haven't learned how to, to react properly, then uh, you can, you're can uh, uh, risking to get this cardiac arrest because you get your, your brain sends two different signals or your body sends two different signals to your heart. Um, and then, of course, there are, uh, uh, beside those physiological uh, aspects, there are also... 
uh, the normal dangers from swimming in open water in general, that's in, in the ocean, you have uh, st under streams, you have rip currents, uh, and, and of course you can meet some animals. I mean, in Norway, the animals are quite nice, actually. I mean, they could be s somehow big, but they're at least not eating you, even though we have this biggest uh, shark, which can be up to 13 meter long, which he's vegetarian, but he has a mouth open, for, for collecting all the algae, and I think this guy is swimming to me with his mouth open, saying, oh, I'm not a plant, I'm not a plant. So, um, but they're, they're actually not that, uh, of course, I can, you can meet a jellyfish, and that's, that's our jellyfishes are, are not dangerous in that regard, that you can be killed, but I mean, it's, it's like, have you ever peed in the bushes with lots of nettles, and so it's uh, like this feeling. Um, you can can panic in a bit. Okay, so the uh, the uh, hypothermia is is uh, very important thing. So here we are talking about the relation between temperature and time and your own habitation, your, your how you have got adapted. So you can train this. You can train to, to, to be in the cold water and your body will learn to, to build up uh, better resistance. And it's very different also. Um, the hypothermia is, is when the core temperature is falling down. Some people are thinking, oh, it's, uh, your, your body is so cold. But you have lots of layers of fat and other things. That's quite good, actually. So eat some cake. Um, so... Uh, and, and before your core temperature is really falling too low, that takes a bit of time. You see, it's, it's, it's uh, more than an hour before it's, it's like this. So uh, uh, the first thing you, you feel when you're getting cold, it's, it's the outside. So it takes a bit of time. Uh, on the other hand, it's uh, very important to, me to remember that the falling of the temperature happens still when you also have left the water. And that is important when we're thinking about how long can I be in the cold water. Uh, you have always to think, okay, but the, there is this after drop effect that you, when you leave the water, your, your outer layers are still cold and the core temperature is still falling, even though we have left the cold water. So therefore, but yes, this is a topic, this hypothermia, how long? Um, so... Why are people doing this? And there are lots of people you wouldn't expect. Uh, they're they're not, not always the one you'd think, oh, they're the adventurous. No, they're quite normal people. Lots of women uh, and, and guys who would think, okay, hmm, sitting for an, for in front of a TV. So, so they're, have, they, have they considered the risks? Uh, they're not looking like the very risky people. So, yes, they have. They are aware of the key risks, and uh, they also have acknowledged that, that this is a part, and um, they have a good pre-swim planning and, uh, for, for the entry into the water. Uh, also, an awareness of the physiology in tune with body sensations. Also, you, you get more um, observant on your own body, uh, it's, of course, the personal experience of pushing the envelope, which was important for those we have interviewed. Um, I will mention a little bit more about this. And, of course, in terms of handling with the risk, we have individual rewarming strategies I will mention in the practical part. Uh, this is one of our popular beaches we are using, Bremnes. And uh, when we ask some of the, uh, the ice swimmers, uh, it was uh, that mentioned things uh, and concentrate on breathing out. It's important to breathe out. Breathing is in is automatic. So they have a clear uh, uh, meanings about how to direct. So also this to, to be prepared what will happen uh, also to, to be prepared how it's dressing up again afterwards when your cold fingers are not working like you're used to then uh, this forget the bra, you just put on the wool and things, and some are not just jumping into the wool and stuff. Um, and also this, they mentioned that it's a challenge, that it's important, and have this feeling of, of mastering. And uh, so the last I want to, to read loud. So Inge Björk and I had been down at Bremnes, this is this beach in the, on the picture, and bathed in March, the 1st of March. 
and we were proud that we had been in the water for 26 minutes. And this lady who said this, she's 74 years old. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it's what happens when we're going out uh, uh, into the cold water. Yes, um, you go out in the water and you're prepared. You, 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 you want to go in there. And the first thing which will happen is, of course, um, your vessels and feet and hands uh, are getting tightened. Um, your skin receptors send also messages to, yes, get this oxytocin, this touch, but also the, the parasympathicus is, uh, in, in, is activated. Uh, the, the feet and hands get getting tighter. Uh, the, the, um, the vessels in there, because the body is concentrating that you have oxygen for the core and for your brain, for heart and brain, it's the most important thing. And uh, then you get this cold, the cold water shock, or the cold water first reaction, is <sighs> that we get <sighs> this uh, short uh, in breath, and then you, you have to, to co uh, and, uh, uh, act against it by, by breathing out, have focus on the uh, exhalation, because then you uh, activate the vagus nerve, the parasympathicus nerve system, and you have this calm down, the anti-stress uh, thing. And then happens some physiological stuff you want to have a look at. And this is both on the cardiovascular system, the endocrine system, and the, the uh, brown fat, the bo uh, body uh, tissue, uh, adipose tissue, brown adipose tissue uh, on the psyche and the mental health and the immune system is influenced. Um, so we get a lower blood pressure and uh, for, uh, improvement of our lipid profile. Um, we have an increase uh, of the catecholamine, insulin and cortisol. They are reacting on this cold stress and uh, some other of the, the uh, hormones, ephedrine, dopamine, serotonin, and uh, uh, endorphin, and those are giving us like this, wow, I mean, you have this dopamine and serotonin is increasing because of the stress, and this is giving us the power, the guts that we, oh, we want to fight, you know, it's from stress, it's fit of uh, flight or fight, and here we say, yes, we have the power, we can do things, and we get the endorphin with, with this, yes, okay, hold this in the balance for getting in good mood, and be motivated to Yes, we get it. So when you go into the water, your, your body reacts first at, oh shit lady, you shouldn't be here, it's fucking cold. It's not your environment, go out. So, and, and when you then decide, no, nobody, I, I want to be here, then, okay, then I give you some doping. And this is this dopamine, serotonin, endorphin. And then, okay, she's staying in there, okay, then we react to that and then she gets some doping and our body reacts with the... With, uh, uh, adapting to the cold, so the body, the brown fat tissue is increasing, and which is a quite good thing. Uh, it's uh, the you know fat is also uh, there are cells, and they're looking normally we think they're looking very yellow. Uh, the brown fat is is a fat cell who who has more mitochondria, and in the mitochondria it's the, the it's our power plants in the cell, and they're producing more warm. And they're using the sugar, so. Uh, that's, that's very nice. And therefore, it's, uh, as long as you have control about, for example, your diabetes too, it's a good thing with the ice bathing because your, your, your body is uh, adapting so that you're using more of the sugar and it's, it's, it's an improvement in, in the insulin resistance. So uh, the mental health I wanted to mention first here, uh, it's actually due to those hormones, uh, this doping hormones, uh, dopamine, serotonin, and endorphin, it's actually uh, helping and preventing depression and fear. And there are new studies from Mark Harper, uh, a British physiologist who actually lived a while in, in Norway. Um, and there is this, I can, can mention about this actually, um, I was, uh, I mean, typical for academics who really love their job. Uh, we are working with humans, uh, nice humans, <laughs> um, knowledge and a lot of pressure. And nowadays with a uh, new public management in the universities and uh, commercialization in university, we have to publish research or do, boop, boop, and you have a workload getting bigger and bigger. And 
you don't want to say no to students if they are asking for help. So it's very easy uh, to be to burn for your work and burn and burn and burn and then, poof, all of a sudden you reach a wall and then you're just crushed down. And that happened to me in uh, 2020 in in the, in the uh, right about this time uh, when I really couldn't do any more. I was so I was so exhausted and I was panicking uh, going to work not doing a perfect job uh, and uh, yeah I was really thinking okay if I, if I, in, in the worst case I can can instead of don't going to university I take my car and go to the beach and then I'm just swimming to Lowfoot Island which is 100 kilometers and uh, I have found out okay yeah uh, uh, if, if I'm, I'm getting hypotherm, so after a while, when you really severe hypotherm, you're losing your conscious, and then you. So I think, oh no! And then I thought, no, I, actually, I was a, was a happy person in my former life. Something is wrong now, and I had happily enough very nice uh, people at university from the union, from the researchers' union, and from the health, what do you call it, healthcare. In Norway, we have those uh, persons selected extra for being healthcare for the employees. And I to told my entire story about how I was bullied by some male colleagues and blah, 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 and the situation with pressure of student evaluations and, and so on and all the workload. And then you to go to the doctor, you're burned out. And then I, I realized, okay, I have to stop. And, and it took some time because I was only doing this. And, uh, but then I was so tired, I had problems to, and it was amazing. I, I haven't, I mean, I'm running also marathon, even though you don't, can maybe can't imagine that, but I'm, I'm, I've run 12 marathons and always keeping training and have this discipline for doing long things. And then all of a sudden I got exhausted by going from my bed to the toilet, which is just two meter away. And, uh, but I was already s uh, swimming and, and uh, in, in cold water. And I think if I hadn't done this, I would have crashed down earlier. But then there were friends and they went, if you're too tired to go on your own, I pick you up, I pick you up. And that was the best. I mean, I had a fantastic psychologist and had another good coach. But, but the best thing actually was when she was picking me up. And then I wasn't swimming, I was bathing. <laughs> uh, and I was into the cold water. And I got also some pills, uh, but the the only thing I realized was I got fatter because of this encitalopram, horrible. So I stopped them. But here, when we went into the ocean, round about one to um, two hours after I've swam, I could function plus minus normally. At least I could do some laundries, uh, buy some groceries, and I feel that okay, I can can tied a little bit in the flat. So the, the thing which I really experience on my own body helps me to getting, yes, getting guts again to, to yes, life is good, was this here. So, uh, and uh, then of course I was very eager to read about more about the studies about depression and fear and that's, that's improved. And, and that's due to those, uh, amongst other things, the hormones which you get more into, but of course also the, setting that you have this, uh, yes, you're mastering a situation which actually looks very weird. <laughs> if you have never done this, you're like, boop, boop, totally crazy. Uh, so you get this feeling of self-efficiency is increasing, this coping, uh, and it's a stress reduction because you're, you're focused. When you go into the cold water, you're focused on what you're doing actually now because the water is touching you directly this is the first thing why swimming is also in general very good in stress reduction, but the cold water gives even more impact on, our, on your body. So you get even more thing to wow, to react. And then you, you can think about other things because you're busy thinking about this exhalation and what is it here? Oh, I feel this, feel that. Uh, so it's a very good stress reduction. You're building resilience uh, because you learn, I can do this. I can do this, and and it's amazing uh, what you can manage. And I remember one lady; she came 
uh, when the swimming hall were closed, she was actually there with her health uh, sporting group. And then she tried it out and she started after the lockdown, that means in April, and the water is still really cold. And she was definitely not the person who was acknowledged as a wonderful, tough, or sporting lady, but, and she was so fascinating, and she know all her, her acquaintances and friends, wow, what you're doing, wow. So she get a boost of, of mastering feeling and, and uh, of uh, self-confidence. Uh, yes, and then you have, of course, when you have focus on the breathing thing, uh, it's, it's kind of a natural mindfulness. And in addition to that, we have this blue space theories. Uh, you have heard about the biophilia, but we also call it the hydrophilia uh, from Nicholson, the blue mind. So actually, we humans, we like the blue space. I mean, if you're, if you're booking a hotel and you, you, you rather want to have the view out to the ocean, not to the parking lot behind the hotel. Uh, so f f researchers have found out that we, are, we like it best if we have a a view over nature with the water we can control. Uh, so the blue space, of course, gives also, the, you're swimming in, in nature, and this alone gives you this feeling of connected to the nature. And uh, in short, that's happening lots of nice things to our body. Uh, <laughs> on the last conference, I, hold, and I talked about the cortisol, the increase in cortisol. You usually we think, okay, this is a stress hormone, but this increase of cortisol, it, it, it helps also to build down uh, uh, inflammations in your body. Uh, so this is very good. So you have fewer in inflammations. Uh, the immune system is improved. So the inflammation if you have, you have in your body is, is lower. Fewer infections. Actually, besides that I got two times after sitting in a full airplane, I get COVID. But otherwise, I have never get a cold anymore or other kinds of, of sicknesses. I mean, against COVID, nothing helps. So uh, uh, besides the vaccination, maybe. But um, a few infections is absolutely clear. And we have all those uh, increase in insulin sensitivity. So for those with a, uh, diabetes, it's, it's a good thing. Lowering blood pressure. But I have to say, if you go into the cold water, the first thing is what is happening is increasing the blood pressure. So guys who have not detected heart problems have to check it first at their doctors uh, because you get an increase of the heart, uh, the blood, blood pressure, measurable, uh, because the vessels are tightened. But after, uh, when you come out, they're opening up again. And this is a good training, actually, for, for your cardio system. So, but you have a, if you ha don't know if you have a high blood pressure and you have never checked it, so, so before you go out in the cold, check that your heart is working. Uh, I mean, more than just beating. Okay, so there are lots of nice healthy things. Uh, we have uh, also greater quantities of brown fat. And uh, yeah, but are we doing training just for the health, <laughs> the physical health? <laughs> go to a to training center in March. <laughs> Compared to January, in January, oh yeah, we should be more healthy. And then in March, oh no, it's so no more nice as sitting home. So there must be something more because just for health reasons, most people are not doing activities. There must be something more which, which is in an activity and especially when the water is like, yeah. Um, so it's really cold. <laughs> Why are people doing this? There must be more uh, and uh, yes there is of course this messaging uh, the mo feeling of mastery uh, and and this social connectedness with, with each other but but there's of course one very important thing is the aesthetic experience of being in in the nature and the feeling of connectedness to nature uh, you you swim and all, all of a sudden you can see some fishes beyond you or you're, you're, you're swimming around and, and you come to places you wouldn't have seen because you're, you're outside, you can't go there. You see plants and you see maybe nice mus mussels or, or urchins, uh, depends where you are. I, I know from, from in, in Great Britain, they're also very fond of this wild swimming. There are some places at Corn where you're swimming with the seals. Uh, so, and you have, you, you're 
you've because of this directly connectedness in your body with the water, you get a other type of connectedness to the nature. I don't know if somebody have done this Shin uh, Yoko, this uh, forest bathing, and or hold around a tree that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, uh, embracing your tree. So this touching, there's something with this tactile feeling we get, which is very important to feel I'm submerged in, in the nature, I'm a part of the nature. And this is, of course, uh, very important. And we have a, uh, when we're going, we are always enjoying the, the, the view, uh, regardless of the weather, actually. Um, and we have done also some, some evening swims in the wintertime, and then the northern lights are dancing above us, or in the summertime when there's a is midnight sun, we always had also have that. Um, and then, so this is the aesthetic part, the mental part I uh, mentioned with this feeling of mastery, I did it. I, oh, I can, when you come out, you get this wow, and you get this feeling, I can conquer your world, fuck you all. So, but then, uh, usually, and uh, it's highly recommended, I do this as well, you do it together with others. And this, doing this very special thing, which is a bit weird. Yeah, we have to say it's, it is. I mean, it's people are going around in thick jackets, and we are stripping and going in our swimsuits out in the ocean. Uh, there is also the social connectedness with the others, social aspects. Uh, you wouldn't have been together with those guys in other terms. We are from lots of different works, uh, occupied with lots of different things, different jobs. Some are pensioners, some are youngsters, some are students, some are lots of different things. Uh, so regardless, social classes, a swimsuit is, is possible for, for all. And, and then this, we are being together in a group and this uh, joining this moment together is also very, very intense. And here, those pictures is uh, what it was a very tragic situation. In, in the end of June, one of our members in the Budu Penguins, she was killed in a car crash. And uh, it was such a shock for us because just a few days before we had this midnight sun swim at one of our most beautiful beaches, and all of a sudden she was gone. And um, we were holding a, a memorial bath for her and her mother was coming because she told us she, that her daughter has told so many nice things about our group and about this ice swimming, and she wanted to experience now also what her daughter has done. And uh, she was so lucky that we do that, and it, it helps her a lot. And uh, uh, then we had lots of flowers, and we pushed, put the flowers into the uh, ocean as a memorial for her. So this is also, we, we, we stick together, and, and also if people need help or some, yes, even though we, in other circumstances, we wouldn't have met each other. So, uh, so conclusions about our the, what we we talk to people is uh, that cold water swimmers have embraced the risk. Uh, there's uh, emotional and social development. There's uh, this mastery and post personal fulfillment, which is very important. There's an increased body awareness because you really get more signals from your body. Uh, there's a detailed management protocol for the stages of the bath, so we have you always control what you're doing, and uh, we are all we are very interested in gaining information. I mean, it's often that I'm coming with some more, but that's, we are nosy about our, our our hobby, and there's also respect and regard for nature because we are very we of course realize what happens, and we are, we, are, we are so close to the nature and the ocean. Uh, there were, I remember there were one uh, time, it was either in the spring or in the autumn, one of those stormy times, and then we get the tr trash from all over the world. It was, I was standing there and I was grieving and crying uh, because there were lots of plastic rubbish, and that was definitely not from our area, from our bay. There were some of this part in the streams and the Gulf Stream is, is, is a long stream so there came international trash to, to our, our main beach and I was standing there, I was shocked because it was I couldn't imagine that that, that we will be, get this into northern Norway but it's I mean the ocean is open and then it was coming there so this, this plastic uh, problem is, is, is a real problem and you're really getting 
very aware of that. Um, yes, and maybe you're interested. So then how to start with ice bathing or ice swimming? So the first thing is, can you swim? <laughs> it's, it's not a good idea starting to learn swim in very cold water, even though you should learn to swim in very cold water, but it's, it's, it's an absolute advantage to start learning to swim if you can swim uh, in, a, in a controlled pool. Uh, do not swim or bath alone. Uh, find a group or at least a partner who has done it before uh, who can advise you because there's, uh, I mentioned that one of the main risks is this hypothermia thing. And uh, if you get hypothermia, you get a little bit did it, did it, uh, because the blood <laughs> to your brain is a little bit diminished. So, and after a while, uh, when you get colder, your, your mental, uh, uh, that you can make good decisions, is a bit distorted. Uh, so it's good to be, too, because when you go in, it's very cold. And then you get adapted. You breathe out, you get adapted, and then, oh, it's not that bad. And then you swim and or bath and think, oh, that's nice. And then you will, after a while, freeze again, and then you should go out. But if you swim longer and say, no, no, I will push, push it a bit, push it a bit, then you come to a state where you don't longer realize, mm, at least not in the beginning, and it's a very tiny, tiny edge. Uh, you get so uh, wow and endorphins and you're so happy that you, you forget that you have been very long out now. And then you're in the, in the, in the part where it could be dangerous. Uh, so um, I had once one lady, she was uh, new, and she was so, ex oh, that was so fantastic. Oh, she was so excited, and oh, that she thought that would be worse. And she was swimming, and I said, oh, I think we, you, you got out now, it's your first time. And then at the land, she was a little, a little bit like, like this, like dizzy, and, uh, and I, I have to take the bus home. And we said, no, no, I think we, we drove you home. Uh, so it's good to be... Too, and we have also a policy that nobody uh, left the beach before not all are outside and dressed up. So that there's still always something, somebody together, because I told you, you can swim a bit and you can train and you can, of course, push your envelope and try to stand in longer, but there should always be somebody with you uh, so that you have control of what happens, because when you go out of the water, there's still this after cooling effect. So, uh, and this is important. And then, um, yes, how to start. It's continue out to swimming after the summer. So if you're going into the lake in summer times, just proceed, proceed, proceed. It was like how I started doing it on a regular basis the entire winter. I just tried, how long can I stay? And then it, all of a sudden it turns out, oh, can, it was November, December, January, okay, <laughs> I stay here. So this is often the normal thing. But... There were also people who started in the cold and just said, I want to. And then they say, okay, it's outside cold. And then you have also the funny moments in winter when it's on the beach, in the air, it's colder than in the ocean. And that's really, really nice. Outside it's minus six, you change and stand and say, wow, it's cold. And then you go into the water, oh, here's warmer. Yeah. And it's a, it's a nice feeling when you go into the water and think, oh, wow, plus five degrees water temperature. Oh, that's quite warm now. Yeah, it's nice. So... Um, uh, then it's important you decide that you want to go in. If you're not determined to face, it's cold, it's cold. It's, when you go in, it's, it's fucking cold, it's cold. It's also for me, it's cold. Uh, so, but I, I know it's, it's getting better as soon as I come in and I'm here and start to swim. Oh, then it's just, I know what will happen then. So, but you have to be determined that I want to do this then you're prepared. Uh, if you're in doubt about your own health, you don't know, I've never checked my heart and I'm not sure and maybe could be a good idea to, to check it, but find a doctor who's positive to physical activity in general. There are some doctors who are very afraid of that people are starting training and not using their pills uh, and not uh, supporting pharmacy. Uh, so find a doctor who's in general positive to sport. I know there are some who aren't. So, uh, um, so a location, it's important to find a location which is good for that. 
and especially getting in is always possible. You can always jump in, but ah, it's possible to come out. Most drowning accidents is actually happens because people are, can go out of the water again. So is it the place where it's easy to come out? Are there tidal differences if you're in the coastal line or some uh, other dangerous? Uh, so go to a place which is meant also for swimming. Uh, and know your own body and your own well-being. It's not the place where you compete with each other who can stay as longest in the water. And then you need some, some equipment. Um, actually, a swimsuit. <laughs> uh, the most important thing is a swimsuit. Uh, so as I'm now training for the ice mile, and there I don't uh, have to, uh, it's not allowed to use gloves and socks. I'm not using them. But actually, when you're doing it for, for having fun in the water and enjoying being there, you need swim, swimwear and then something on your head. Uh, it could be a hat, a beanie, some are, some are swimming the usual, the old-fashioned breaststroke with a head-up breaststroke so that your uh, head is not coming under because you, we, are, we are a little more sensitive on, on, our, on our top. Uh, so you get this brain freezing feeling. So, so lots of people are swimming with a head-up breaststroke and it's also meant as a good thing because then your head is warm. And that means we, we stay cool in our brain <laughs> when our head is warm. Uh, so then neoprene socks and gloves is a very good idea because it's the first thing we drop in a way for surviving. And when we go out in cold water, we are, our body is in the mood for surviving. It's fingers and feet because we can live without hands and feet without problems and not you with some problems of course but it's uh, we are not dying at least so the the hands and 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 feet will got and and a little bit like you feel feel numbness and can't control me so so if you have neoprene socks and gloves i know it looks very special when you're standing in a, just a swimsuit and then you have gloves on but this is a really game changer it's totally different with socks and gloves and if you don't First one to try, it's also woolen socks are in fact, in, in fact quite good. I mean, it's not the same like neoprene socks, but woolen socks are better than nothing. Uh, or bathing shoes. So be, because then you have something isolating at the most uh, distant parts, which are freezing first. And this is really, really a difference. Uh, for after the swim, you need some warm clothes. And I re highly recommend woolen things because they are... Uh, yeah, they can get a little bit wet without um, losing the isolation, and uh, it's it's the warm best warmest thing. So the sheep know what they're doing, uh, standing in rain, so they have have never changed to other materials. They're good, uh, and have so many clothes that you think, ah, isn't that too much? No, 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 no. <laughs> have enough. Have an extra layer. Um, then have something isolating to stand on. The most challenging thing is you're coming out from the water, you're wet on your feet, and outside on the beach it's snow. <laughs> this is cold. Also. Going, going with the wet feet on snow. Uh, have something isolating to stand on. Um, something sweet to eat. Uh, because it's the sugar gives direct burning material to our body, and it's the inside uh, warming up is, is very important. So it's, here it's the, 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 the time for with the best conscious in the world eating chocolate cake um, or chocolate cookies. Uh, something suitable warm to drink. Suitable warm, that means if it's too hot, our body would use energy to cool it down that we can swell it. So suitable warm, that means okay warm. Uh, and... and, and if you want some sweet to drink. Uh, then we have a, a, a bucket with us and, and warm water, hot water, uh, where we can stand with our feet in when, while changing. Because I told you that the vessels in finger and feet are the first tightened down, and there we are coldest. And then you get warm uh, around your feet. And when we come out of the water, the cold blood, which were in, in our limbs, is circulating around you. Uh, and then this cold blood will circulate and you get this cold feeling. It's, it's a very weird feeling. I will mention a bit more about that. And when we stand in, with the feet in warm water, it's, it's a bit better then. But when I say that, don't go in 
warm water directly after the cold swimming because then you can get this blood pressure fall because your vessels are tight because of the cold. And when you then would emerge directly into warm water, then the blood vessels go very broad immediately and then the blood pressure is falling rapidly. And then you can, ugh. And uh, don't try this. <coughs> I tried it <coughs> in Finland in, a, in this Allah sea pool. I was swimming in the sea pool and my friend, a Finnish lady, she was swimming in the heated outdoor pool. And I came from the cold water swimming. I just want to tell her I'm finished. Now we can go to the sauna now. And I, I swam to her and, in the, and it was, not that one, 28 degrees. But I came from, from, from uh, two or one degree. <laughs> and I think that, oh, ooh, maybe I go to the side again and go up. I have to lay down a bit because the blood pressure was falling so rapidly. So after that, sauna is okay because that's just air, warm air. And the con convection to the, with the, between air is not that fast. But uh, water, you know, when you have burnt your hand, you put it in water and not just waving the air. The, the convection to the, the, uh, that the warm is leaded away is much higher in water. So it's much more directly. So but sauna is okay, but not jump, wait before you jump into the, the, the warm whirlpool. Um, yes, it could be a good idea to have a changing coat, warm coat, because then you can have it around you and can dress in it. It's this one, there are lots of difference now. And I always have to have with me a thermometer because I always think it's interesting uh, to see how is the temperature because it's not always, a, I, I know I, I'm quite sure how I feel, how feel it's when it's five degrees or 10 degrees or so. But sometimes you can be tired. Maybe you haven't eaten fr uh, breakfast or you have a bad day. Then you will feel the temperature different. And you have to take care where are you in on this day. So there are days when you are you're feeling okay, five minutes is enough, and there are other days when you're very happy and you think, okay, I can swim for 20 minutes. So listen to your body, uh, and if in doubt, uh, ask ask a doctor. And uh, then breathe out when you go in. You are determined. So breathe out. Shh. Have focus on the exhalation. Look at the horizon, which used to be very beautiful. Focus on exhalation. Breathe out. Find your inner penguin. And you will, you will be amazed when you concentrate. Uh, one of our ladies always say, I start singing the national anthem. And so when you have finished the first verse, then you're over oh, the cold shock, then you're fine, and then, wow, then you're happy. Uh, so... Uh, Exhale is important, and then you will come to this endorphin. We call it for endorphin kick. It's the endorphin kick, and you're really you're, you're guggling like a kid. And uh, I mean, I, I mentioned I, I run 12 times uh, finished marathon, and I get this endorphin kick when I see the sign one kilometer left. It's kilometer 41. <laughs> Then I guess, ah, oh. and then I, I want to, to kiss all the people around, uh, waiting along the, the rope. And then I, I, I'm most fond of the Stockholm Marathon, and you're running into this old uh, Stockholm Olympic Stadium, and I, I could, could, could embrace all that, and I'm just mwah, running at this. You get this after just two, three minutes. I need not to run first, first 41 kilometers for getting the same thing. So that's a really good thing. If you don't want to run marathon for getting the same kick, do that. <laughs> so you get the endorphin kick and you're really, you're, you're happy. Uh, you, I've never, no one of us has ever uh, said, oh, it was bad going out. It, you can have sometimes, oh, okay, I have an announcement to go into this, oh, okay. But I've never regretted a bath or a swim. So you will, after this, when you have, been out there and you were really happy and that was really fun and wow you haven't couldn't imagine that you would got this amazing feeling you have to wow then you may also be aware that get dressed fast you, you you're, you're totally ex excited when being in and then first the the new beginner beginners mistake is often that they are so happy they're jumping around at the beach and no no do put your clothes on because the after drop is waiting for you you have 
a couple of few minutes when you come out from the ocean where you don't feel the cold. You come out and say, I'm so, because all, all things are tightened, you're isolated, uh, and you, you think you're, you're warm. Uh, so then you have to be aware, dress on as fast as possible, because then after a while this cold blood will circulate in your body. And if you experience it the first time, it's a bit very weird. You're standing there and feel that something cold, cold is going around. So um, it's not like a colleague of mine once uh, said, it's not a problem to get cold, it's a problem if, if you stay cold. So therefore, important, come out, dress up, lots of clothes, drink some warm, eat some, some cookie or something sweet. There are lots of uh, literature, more and more. <laughs> this was again in Helsinki. Um, so this is one of the famous beaches in, in uh, Buda. I want just to show some of the, it's the aesthetical thing. This is one of the longest sand beaches <coughs> in my area, two kilometers. And I was there with a group of students. Um, so it's this finding your inner peace, getting all this mindfulness aspect, being in the nature, enjoying nature. And of course, I have to show, I'm so proud that Paula is here uh, from the Adventure Knowledge Class 2021. And uh, <laughs> this is her. Um, uh, you get addicted. When you start with it and you, you feel that, wow, it's, it's, you, you, you want to do more. Uh, and yes, some tries, because of the health, tries to have a cold shower. Could be a training thing, but I think this cold shower is, is, is a typical healthy thing for the health. Uh, you're, you're, it's, it's a different thing if you go into the body with the feet first and then come here, uh, than having a cold shower. And you have this nature and you have this connectedness with the nature and with the others. So uh, it's... It's something when you start with this and you find your spot, it's fantastic. And I'm so honored or humble that uh, Paula learned this at this class in Adventure Knowledge and she got addicted. <laughs> and uh, she founded then in Bremen the Bremer penguins. And they're still swimming in, on regular base. And, uh, that's, uh, and she, she joined uh, the class in Norway for two years ago. So it's... it's this is a wonderful, great moment for me as a teacher and I swimming. So, so uh, I hope it was inspiring for you. So I just thank you for your attention.